Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So if you've been following my videos lately, I've been rebuilding and getting my W55 manual transmission for my swap on my IS300. So on today's video, what we're gonna be doing is rebuilding the clutch slave cylinder. I'm gonna go ahead and run the lines for my swap. That should be a quick five, 10 minute video for this basic maintenance step. So in today's video, we're gonna be rebuilding this slave cylinder right here. This is an IS300 W55 slave cylinder. It should be the same for most Toyota Ison slave cylinders. So this is the one that's off the transmission right now. I've got this rebuild kit here. These rebuild kits, OEM, are pretty cheap. They're like $10, $15, right? And it comes with a new piston, seals, a boot, a spring, and then the bleeder valve right here. So you just pick up these from the dealer or aftermarket versions of these. And then on here, we, we're gonna replace that. We're gonna get this piston out. So in order to get this piston out, you probably just need some compressed air to put it in here and just shoot it into like a cup or a container or something. So that way you don't destroy anything. So we'll go ahead, use the air compressor and push this thing out right now. Make sure the bleeder valve's cleaned. <coughs> Popped. So yeah, just make sure that you get all the fluids out and everything's clean. But Ooh, this thing is nasty. So you can see this thing is freaking deteriorated as far as the seal goes. And we got all this old fluid right here. So we're gonna spray this out and we're super clean. We won't be using this again anyways, but I just wanna clean it up and see how it looks along with the spring. And then the inside of this thing is just plain nasty right now. This thing is just full of all kinds of fluid, leftover fluid and corrosion inside. And right there inside. So we'll go ahead and just clean this up with some super clean. Uh, make sure everything is nice and clean on the inside of that thing without rust or anything before we put, put it all back together. Let's go ahead and just fill this thing with some super clean. Let it soak in a little bit and then just clean it out with a dirty rag or something. Clean it out as much as possible. We might have to get a rubber brush or a little wire wheel or something inside there, just don't damage the walls too much. So after cleaning this piston a little bit, you can see right there the seal on the top, the first seal right there is deteriorated right on the edge there where it meets the metal. So this thing definitely needs to be replaced as far as the seal goes and the piston as part of the rebuild kit. So I let this baby soak overnight in some vinegar. I was able to take it out, clean it up. You see all this nasty brown stuff is all the stuff I cleaned out of it. And then I hit it with a drill mole and a little brushing blade to clean up all these little edges to get them all polished again. And everything is nice and clean on the inside now. There is some pitting, but that's kind of expected. It's like the inside of a brake caliper after 20 years of use, there's gonna be pitting of the cast iron inside that you can't really get rid of. So you just go ahead and just polish it down as much as possible. Looks like the area where the, tra the piston travels is pretty clean, good enough for our use. So we'll go ahead and put all this thing back together. I went ahead and primed this thing with some filler primer. I'm gonna let this thing dry for about 10 or 15 minutes and then coat it with some perfect match. And once we get that perfect match on, is pretty much it. I'm gonna let it dry and then we're gonna go ahead and rebuild this thing back with that color. All right, as you can see, we put two layers of perfect match graphite gray pearl and this baby is nice and clean now. Look at how smooth and good looking that thing is with all that metallic. Go ahead and let this thing dry for a couple hours, maybe a day or so before I touch it and put it all back together. Along with the conversion I'm gonna be doing today, I'm gonna have to change out the push rod on here to a longer Supra NA version. This one is 85 millimeters versus the 60 millimeters of the stock W55 IS300 one. And the reason why we have this difference is the dual mass flywheel versus the regular single flywheel that we're using. The dual mass is actually thicker, so it uses a shorter push rod for the actual pushing of the arm. We need that longer one from the Super because the Super has a single mass like the one we're using now, so we need the longer push rod for this transmission. In addition, I'm gonna go ahead and replace the two bolts for this. The original ones are still perfectly fine. They have a little bit of surface corrosion that I could clean up. Uh, they're actually zinc coated. The new ones right here, new OEM ones, aren't zinc coated. If you guys didn't know, I think around 2005, 2006, they basically banned all zinc plated hardware on cars. So they had to use a different coating. So all newer cars have this gray 
coating versus the old school zinc coating. And that's the one big difference on old school JDM cars. As people are restoring them, they're getting their hardware all done in zinc. All right, now that everything is dry, we could go ahead and start putting this thing together. So one of the things I noticed that the kit doesn't come with is a new bleeder valve. So they expect you to use the old one or at least pick up a new one from the auto parts store or while you're at it. So I do have an extra Isen one laying around along with the cap. The kit comes with a replacement cap, but it doesn't come with the actual bleeder valve or the bleeder screw itself. You could also use brake bleeder screws. The only thing that you gotta watch out for is the actual length of them. If you see this brake one I have here and then the one that came out of there, it's a little bit shorter. It still works and it fits in here, but you gotta be mindful of how long it is because if it's too short, it won't go all the way in and it won't seal because it needs to seal with this V right here on the edge that, into the hole. So I'll go ahead and use the icing one that I had laying around. I'll replace the rubber cap on it, even though this is a new one. I'll just do it since I have the kit already. All right, so we'll go ahead and get everything started. I'll go ahead and just put the bleeder valve in. It just screws right into here pretty easily there. I'm gonna keep this thing on here for now just to keep stuff out of here. Once we get it onto the car and my new line, I'm just gonna have the new line just threads right into this and we're gonna tighten it down. As far as the inside of here, what we want to do is go ahead and just coat it with some silicone grease. I've got some just regular plumbing silicone grease right here. I'll go ahead and just put some here on the inside just to lube it up and then put a little bit on the seals on here just to make sure we get a nice even coating on here to protect it and to help it glide. And this is silicone, so it's going to be resistant to moisture and all that. All right, so once we lube it up, make sure we put the spring in place. It snaps in on the tip of here and it locks into place, right? So we got the spring and then just insert in there. Like I said earlier, this rebuilding kit costs about $15. You might be able to get it cheaper, maybe $10 to $8, depending on where you're getting it. But a new replacement slave cylinder Ison brand, which is the same as the OEM one, can be had for anywhere from $40 to $50 online as an aftermarket version. And if you don't want to go through the trouble of rebuilding this or spending the money and refurbing it or whatever, or if it's just pitted and damaged beyond repair and corroded, go ahead and just buy a new one for 40 bucks. You'll still have to pick up one of these, which is if you're doing the conversion I'm doing to make it longer. But other than that, if you get this for less than $15, it's worth the rebuild because you're basically replacing all the moving parts except for the body. So next thing you want to do is go ahead and just get this thing in there. So you'll see that it has a notch right there. Just go ahead and just push that through the hole here. Since this is a moving part, I'm gonna go ahead and put some silicone grease inside the boot. And just around the rod here, dip it in there. Just, yeah, I might not be able to push it on here until I actually get it on the car and actually have it against the arm and push it in. So next thing we're gonna do, we're basically gonna be bench bleeding the clutch master cylinder before we reconnect everything. I should have done this off the car, but since I put this in so long ago, I didn't wanna fill this with fluid, but you could easily do it when it's still on the car. You just have to go inside and just pump this thing by hand with the pedal down there, pulling it up and down. So what you wanna do is basically fill this thing up, pump it through, and fill the master cylinder with fluid with no air. So you'll notice in the tube here, the air bubbles will come up and you'll just pump the fluid back into there. You wanna do it until you don't see any more bubbles. I use one of these plastic bench bleeder things that come with master cylinders and everything that I had laying around. You can use like a bleed valve or something else that you could screw in there, but this is probably the easiest way. We just wanna go ahead and just fill it up with some dot three or dot four brake fluid. Let's fill it all the way up to the top right now. Before we get too far, I'm gonna put some rags under here so it doesn't drip out. Since I'm doing this alone, I just put the cap back on here so the tube doesn't fall out for any reason. I'm gonna go inside the car and just pump it. Just pump it by hand, pull it in and out. I can see the fluid coming through now. So now that some of the fluids into the actual mass of cylinder, I'm gonna top it off just so I don't get any more air into here. Get that down into there. The 
Tap on, just let it hold. So every time I pump it now with the fluid in there, it pumps pretty strongly. So really need to just make sure I clip this down so it holds, but still have enough room to recirculate the fluid. All right, looks pretty good now. The whole line is full of fluid, no air in it. So I'll go ahead and disconnect this. So we'll go ahead and install the clutch line. So if you guys remember on my parts video, I bought this clutch line on Amazon. It was like 40 bucks. It was actually cheaper than the Chase Bays and some of the other options. The only thing that I realized after I got it was that it was just steel braided with no coating on it. So I ended up putting this mesh loom on here just to protect it. I had some of this laying around with some heat shrink on the ends, but it's a pretty good line for the price. It's very affordable. The Chase Bay's one is like $60 or $65 or something. <clears throat> All right, we're under the car. Go ahead and just screw these in. It's two 12 millimeter headed bolts. The torque on these is only nine foot pounds. So basically, the same as a 10 millimeter bolt. So you just go ahead and just tighten it down by hand. And now you'll see, yeah, this thing is freaking, yeah, I don't know how the hell, so I might have to just have the, I'll have to get these things in and then try to push it in place because this thing's gonna be I was tight. able to snap it in. This looks, see how full extension this thing is? Go ahead. Push. All right, so we'll go ahead and make sure you don't cross thread anything, getting it into the transmission. This thing does put a lot of pressure back onto it. All right, we got it in there and it looks like an OEM slave cylinder, even with that extended rod. Most of that rod ends up going inside the slave cylinder, but when it does push it, it's gonna have much more length to push this push rod so you get that clutch into there just because of this new setup that we're doing with the single mass flywheel. All right, so we're underneath. We'll go ahead and get this screw off of the slave cylinder and go ahead and thread the line into here. So if you notice on my line, I've got a little adapter on the end of it. Right here that threads into there. So you wanna make sure you, you could go ahead and take that adapter off and just thread it in, make sure you don't cross thread anything. And then you could thread your line into here. All right, once I got it tightened down, I made sure I did a little bit of wire management with everything. I use an existing hole right here that uses a clip, just an OEM uh, zip tie clip, and I just pushed it in there and zip tied it along with the reverse light wire. So that thing's nice and tight in there. It's not touching any of the fuel lines or any of the other brake lines coming down here. That's all I just wanted to make sure. I just tucked it between the frame here and behind these brake lines so they don't rub and wear out for any reason. And then I'm gonna just go ahead and cut the end of that zip tie and then we'll get back to the top and fill this with fluid. What I'm do next is go ahead and just remove this thing off the master cylinder. First thing I wanna do is just kind of pull this tube out and drain everything back into the master cylinder. Just pull this whole hose out, put it off to the side and then go ahead and remove the nipple. I had to thread this thing in there so kind of dripping whatever fluids left in there. Once you get that clear, um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually fill the line for that and then down to the massive cylinder. To do that, I put a little piece of rubber onto this and I'm gonna fill it with this little syringe right here. It's kind of ghetto, but it'll at least fill the line up and fill the slave cylinder and then I don't have to worry about bleeding it as much. So just go ahead and go put that into there and just let it. All right, so now that we've filled up the line, we'll go ahead and thread this thing in. We'll go, I'm gonna go ahead and remove that rubber I was using earlier. I'm 
I want to make sure you get in here. Try to thread it in, but don't cross thread anything. That's the last thing you want to do here. Just kind of slowly hand thread it until it get, catches. It's kind of slippery, so you might have to use the rag to turn it. But yeah, once you, once you get in there and it goes, it should go pretty easily. Just any kind of pressure from the line or anything, you just want to make sure you relieve it and catch those threads. Once you do that, it should be good there, and then we'll go ahead and tighten it. All right, once you get in there, just take your rag out. This thing's soaked up a lot of the fluid by now. All right, I got it routed through right now. So we're back under here. Looks like everything's back together. When I initially came back down here, this thing was leaking right here, this fitting right here into the actual slave cylinder. So I just tightened it down really tight to make sure that it got a good seal. I'm hoping it doesn't leak. If it does, then I might have to replace that stinking fitting. I should have just gone with the chase bay after spending the money on this, putting the loom on here, and then getting that fitting that didn't fit directly. I could have gotten the chase bays for 60 bucks instead of trying to save money with this line. So right now I'm under here, I'm by myself, so I'm gonna do a little bit of a ghetto bleed. So I've got this hose over here over this bottle. I'm gonna go ahead and pump it by hand, try to move some fluid in here, tighten this thing down and hopefully it gets tight. We'll go ahead and open the bleeder valve and then go up and pump, kind of move some fluid into here. It's pumping up here. I don't know if anything's moving down there. This fitting right here is slowly leaking. So that's not good. I might have to get a new fitting now. All right, take the hose off. Go ahead and just test it again, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna leak. Guys, thanks for joining me all the way to the end of this quick video on doing that rebuild of the slave cylinder, getting it in here, doing all the wiring and tubing and everything and getting that down there and bleeding the whole thing, but then we had a little bit of failure. So I did a bit of research and it looks like, like the Chase Bays and some of the other ones, they actually use a banjo into the slave instead of a direct fitting. That might be my issue right now causing the leak just because it wasn't designed to go in a direct fitting like that. And the seat of that thing, because I looked at that fitting I bought, it does have the inverted flare that mates up with the inside of the actual slave cylinder, but maybe it's not making good contact or there's corrosion in there. I'm gonna go ahead and order a banjo to 3AN and try to fix that and see if that fixes my solution. Anyways, if you guys found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to your channel to stay on top of this build or whatever I'm doing around the house, in the garage or on these cars, go ahead and subscribe to your channel, turn on bell notifications to get notified every time I upload a video. For all these little projects that I do, if I can do it, you guys can do it. I wanna thank you for watching and I'll talk to you guys next time.